How, uh, how has the week been and uh, the preparations for the final home game of this stretch? Yeah, um, these, uh, these elongated periods of time with, uh, with the Gold Cup weekend has given us a, a nice opportunity again to, to get the right balance of work and preparational time, rest, recovery, uh, be mentally and physically ready and stimulated for, for Saturday's game against Chicago. And guys look in a good place as always. Wonderful. We'll now open the floor for questions. As per usual, please alert me through the chat if you have a question for uh, coach or any of the players who will come after him. Uh, we will kick it off with Ray Hills from the Tennessee end. Hey, good afternoon, Gary. Um, I'm curious to know, uh, with, with Aki coming into the team, um, how, how long have you gotten a chance to watch him in training and, and get a chance to see him up close? Um, that's the first part. And the second part okay. is, um, with that knowledge mm -hmm. uh, for you, do you see yourself mm -hmm. uh, maybe thinking about how your squad has been playing, playing style-wise, and how Ake could put, possibly change that or upgrade that, or, or does it change at all? No, I, I don't think so at all, Drake. Um, you know, I've seen a, a reasonable amount now of, of um, Ake in, in training. He's, he looks in a good place. He's fitted in brilliantly with the group, um, fluent in Spanish and French. He's, he's a real, real good character. He's got a great personality, which goes a long, long way when you, you're trying to make these, these big moves and the transition he has done from Mexico to here. Um, but of course, the most important thing is the, is the language of, of football in general. And when you're on the field, your talent and your qualities speak for themselves, and he's he's been able to show what he's capable of in in you know quite a, an abundance. So really pleased with him. He's uh, he's on track and he's in a good place, and you know he's uh, he's he's in the reckoning for uh, for everything that we're talking about right now. Ben. Yeah, Gary, it felt like last year when Chicago came to Nissan Stadium that they were one of the better sides you, you played against just on, in possession on the ball. Um, do you feel like that's accurate? And, and what have you seen from them, especially in their last couple games when they've kind of turned their form around a bit? Yeah, the, the, last, the last three games for Chicago have, have been, I would think, their most effective uh, nine goals in, in three outings. And they seem to have found a, a much more comfortable and effective format or shape to the group. Uh, you know, it would it would be a conundrum to me from a distance as to why they started off so slowly, because I do think they're one of the most talented groups. And in answer to your question, I, I felt last year, I remember the game, um, they were playing very, very well. They were you know, looking extremely positive when they came to Nissan Stadium last year. And and strangely enough, they're in a very similar spot when they come to us this year. They must be buoyed and confident by, you know, the, the games, the recent games that they've played. They've got, you know, the majority of their um, senior and, and effective talent, if you like, on the on the roster and available to play. And... It, it will be a tough, tough game. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Tim Sullivan. Gary, after, uh, I guess, eight or nine days to, to reflect on what you saw against Atlanta, how are you feeling about it now? Is it still the same sort of thing where it's kind of like, you know, except for this one, this one aspect, which was defending set pieces, we, you feel pretty good about it? Yeah, to, time time's a great healer, uh, as we all know, and uh, I've been able to maybe look at the game in a, a, a more calculated and philosophical fashion. I, I actually thought we played some, some very decent football in, in, a, in a fierce rivalry game. And, you know, look, we've, we've conceded those goals that, you, you know, doesn't need to, to be, um, you know, we don't need to, to harbour on from, dead, from those dead balls. But, you know, the, the, the positives are not a lot of opportunities in open play, not a lot of goals scored against us in open play. Um, some really bright and positive 
uh, creative football from our group at home. I feel as though we're in a good groove. I think there's a, a good feel, and there should be. We've had a long run of home games. And whilst we would love to have taken advantage of one or two of, of the previous games, we can only ever look at what's in front of us. And we have a great opportunity against a, what I would class as a playoff rival. Yes, they started slowly, but they're certainly um, one of the informed teams. And it's important that we, we get a very positive result against them at the weekend and keep ourselves in the hunt for those uh, you know, top spots in, in the Eastern Conference. Dre Hills with a follow-up. Yeah, just you mentioned earlier, Gary, that you, you've seen a lot from, from Ake in, in, in training. I'm curious to know what exactly uh, has he offered to you? Has he impressed you by? Uh, and second part is, uh, what's the status on, on Don Baji? How is he doing in his recovery? Yeah, it, it's amazing when you see players close up. You know, we, we get the opportunity to look, be it from, you know, a... a video, live TV, but nothing's ever quite the same as, as being next to them in a training session or match. Even, even watching live from the stadium, which is obviously the next rung down. Um, it, it's been wonderful to watch him in full flow. He's got great footwork. He's very light on his feet. Um, you know, really good centre of gravity and great change of pace uh, as, as he tries to get away from defenders. And, and I think just as importantly, he, he looks to have a very good understanding and appreciation of others around him, which was something I think we all saw. But again, until you get him in your own group, it's hard to determine how he's actually going to settle into that and, and, and what sort of relationship he's going to build. But already I can see some very nice connections. And I do believe he'll give us a dimension that we don't have at the moment, which will be important as we move forward um, and, and try to achieve something that we didn't last year. Tim Sullivan with uh, the final question for coach for today. Hey, Gary, um, obviously you don't have Walker in camp right now. Did you get a chance to watch him with the U.S. on Sunday? And, and if so, and if you're planning to watch him again tonight, um, do you, how do you watch, it, watch when you have one of your players out on international duty? Do you just kind of watch as a fan? Do you give it a, a bit of a critical eye? Kind of what is that experience like for you? Yeah, it's, it's a very different one. I saw some of the game. I didn't watch all of it. Um, you know, I've, I felt as though the US would would be a, a tad too strong as, as suspected for, for Haiti and maybe some of these, these earlier games. The, the Canada game, I'm sure, will be very competitive. But, you know, understandably, the US are, are one of the big favourites. Uh, as far as, as Walker or Alistair go, you know, I'm never sure, obviously, what they're being asked by their national coaches to, to try and achieve. Um, Alistair played, you know, right side of a, a three as, as a defender. Um, what I will say about Walker is his distribution was very good. Um, he looked very composed and, and uh, confident, um, as, as you may well expect him to be in a very good US team. But I think what he is showing right now and, and what he shows here regularly are those leadership qualities. He looks like one of those individuals that, that you can rely upon and, and that's maybe got a slightly different edge to him than one or two other of the defenders that I've seen, be it in the US group or, or you know, in any other nation. Um, but, you know, it is tough um, to, to, to watch as a fan. You, you're always trying to, you know, look at your own players and, and, and be positive or critical constructively in, in whatever way you can because you know you're getting him back you know hopefully in one piece fairly soon thank you coach yeah preparation's gone really well this week uh obviously it's starting to get hot and humid um uh, but i think training has still been sharp uh preparing for a a team that i think is dangerous uh, a team that's been on a little bit of a resurgent run uh, they have, I think they had four games at home and they picked up quite a few points. And so I think they're confident. Um, but so are we. I think we, we were a little bit disappointed with the result against Atlanta. Uh, but we continue to, uh, to look forward and to try, try to learn from, you know, the things that we're doing well and the things that we need to work on. And, and we are uh, putting those things into practice and training. And so training's been sharp and we're ready for the weekend.
Thank you, Dax. Uh, we will open the floor for questions. We will kick it off with Tim Sullivan, but a reminder to everybody to please alert me through the chat if you have a question for Dax. Tim? Yeah, first of all, six shirt, Dax. I like that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, uh, and more importantly, perhaps, um, obviously you guys are without a few of your, of your regular um, starting 11 type guys. How have you seen um, guys like Brian and, and like Jack stepping into the shoes that have been left by the guys that are not there right now? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And it's one that, you know, I think has been pretty obvious for all to see uh, in these last few games, how Mike and Gary wanted to build this team uh, for these difficult summer months where your depth would really be tested. And I know Brian Anunga, everyone you know, saw the contribution he made to our team last year, which was a very important one uh, at times when Anibal was injured or, uh, you know, me and Anibal needed to be rotated. Uh, Brian stepped in and did a fantastic job. He was a little unfortunate with a tough injury earlier in the year, uh, at which point you still have good depth with Matt LaGrasa being able to step in. Um, and so these are things that I know coaches and, and technical directors and general managers prepare for. And so obviously with the Gold Cup, we knew we were going to lose some very important contributors. And I think these months, especially with everyone in MLS continuing to play regular season games but having but losing some very valuable pieces to, to the puzzle, there are no excuses. There, there are no excuses for any team to sit there and say, oh, well, we're missing one, two, three, four of our best players, and so it's an excuse for us to drop the level. Uh, everyone is on the same playing field when it comes to losing players, some more than others, but we have a lot of faith in our depth. And a guy like Jack Mayer is a perfect example of a young player who didn't play hardly at all last year, who came into preseason, I think, with higher expectations for himself and from the team. And you can see that he's starting to deliver on some of the promise uh, which made him be selected as high as he was in the Super Draft and the faith that our, our staff is putting in him. So Another uh, very important couple weeks coming up for those guys, and hopefully they can continue to solidify themselves because obviously it makes Gary's job tougher when it comes to team selection. Ben Wright with the next question. Yeah, this is really so Tim. I'm wondering if you could kind of uh, talk a little bit more about Brian Anunga's performance last week. It, it felt from my vantage point his performance in Nashville, sure. Do you think that's fair, and, and how's it been specifically playing next to him the past couple? It, it sounded like, like it was best the performance. best performance okay. he's had. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. we were having a little bit of a, of a glitch. So That's all right. Um, I, I, I got the question. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've, you know, I've been asked about Brian before, and, and you know, I always try to be honest when I assess you know, my teammates and, and sp certain players. Um, I think Brian, the growth that he's shown – in the last year and a half has just been tremendous. And you could see early last year, um, you know, the speed of play was, was a little bit too much for him. And you see the work that he puts in in training. You see him staying after training. He comes in early to go, to go out before to work on his technique and his passing uh, and his just awareness of space. Because in MLS, at a higher level, uh, you don't have as much time on the ball as you do in, in the lower levels, I think. And so... For him, uh, I thought he was excellent against Atlanta. You know the things that you're going to get from Brian uh, in terms of his defensive presence. He's going to win almost every tackle that he goes into. Uh, you know, He's going to be that enforcer in the middle of the field that, that teams need and they need to rely on. If you want to win the battle in the middle of the field, then that's always an important factor. But he's, very, he's, he's impressed me a lot with how much he's grown in confidence when he has the ball at his feet. Uh, you know, when to play simple, when to play one touch, when to play two touch, when to drive into space, uh, when to take what the defense is, is giving you. These are all things that I think for a young player are difficult to navigate. Uh, and he certainly went through some growing pains, but uh, for sure, uh, one of his best performances in a Nashville shirt against Atlanta. Great heels with the next question. Yeah, Dex, this is just based off of my own eye test, but um in comparison to how you guys finished the season in terms of how you guys communicate, um, the intensity that you guys played with last season, uh, am I am I all for maybe spot on that you guys have probably elevated that level of intensity during the game? Um, for example, you know, it gets Atlanta, I saw during a dead ball, and talking about Brian, he had, um, he and Jack were just really in an intense communication conversation. 
Uh, I've seen when their ball's being played, if you've had some things to say to some of your teammates, is that just, um, you know, more of just me realizing it more? Or do you think that you guys have had more of an intensified um, way of playing the game, especially during the game when you guys are competing? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a fair observation from you. Uh, I think it's been raised certainly up another level, up a notch. That's always natural and that's always going to happen when you have guys that have been around each other a little bit longer. They're a little bit more familiar with each other. And I think the one thing that, that I try to communicate with the guys all the time and the staff I think does a good job of is everybody in this locker room needs to take ownership and accountability of, of what's happening out on the field. This is not just on three, four guys. This is not just on the coaching staff. It's on all of us to raise the level and raise the bar when it comes to training, when it comes to games. So when you see young players like Brian and Jack having conversations like that, when you see um, you know, guys like Hani and guys like Randall and younger attacking players uh, demanding more out of themselves and demanding more out of the players that play behind them or in front of them to be more creative, uh, you know, to, to have better games, you know, that raises the level of the whole team. And that's something that I think you know, when you're an expansion team, you have to have that to try to be successful. And when we had a successful season last year, how do you raise the bar? And that's by everyone else, little by little, taking ownership and accountability uh, and making sure that they're trying to get the best out of themselves and their teammates. And so it doesn't surprise me, but it's a good observation. Team Sullivan with the final question for Dax. Um, obviously, this is a group that has gotten along really well, but when you add a new body in terms of Ake, is it... Is it Change. The obvious reason he's added is for on-field purposes, but does, does something change kind of in the way that the way that you get to prepare when you have kind of maybe an injection of new energy and a new player coming in? I don't think anything changes, honestly. I think that um, the goal when you add a player, doesn't matter if it's a rookie or a designated player, the goal is to always make them feel comfortable, make them feel welcome. And I can see by, you know, the smile on Ake's face and some of the brief conversations that I've had with him that he's excited to be here. He's excited to contribute. So I think the thing that I'm really proud of being an older guy on the team, you know, being a leader on the team is that our locker room is a really welcoming environment. It's a really great environment to come into. Uh, I think guys get along with each other off the field and you see that translate on the field. And so when you add a player of Ake's quality, um, you know, it's always going to be, questions are always going to be asked about how quickly can he adapt? How quickly can he adjust? How quickly can he contribute? And some of the answer to that question falls on him to be able to come in and perform and prove that he's fit. But a lot of that also falls on the team and how that environment helps get the best out of him. And I think that uh, for him coming into a new environment, I think it'll take a little bit of time, but uh, certainly there's not going to be a lack of, of confidence given to him from the rest of the guys on the team so he can hopefully hit the ground running. Thank you, Dax.